Hey guys and welcome to another Lord on the Aftermath video and today we're looking at the changelog for 1.45 and probably the most asked question before I even start the video, when does it come? We're not sure yet, it's not been confirmed but these are some of the changes that's gonna come to 1.45 um, There also could be new things coming on the list as we say here, disclaimer being as an structure as I am, there's more likely changes I've forgotten to write or keep looking after this thread to see any changes. I'll let new stuff with new. So we are going to take a look, but we're going to go through more of the more important things with the races. There's a couple of things with the miscellaneous, with m with shops being moved I to other areas, creeps being uh, changed to position on, uh, flying speed on, Normal heroes and also flying heroes are being adjusted. You can all read about that. But we are going to first off start off with the terrain changes. So on the pi on the screen right now, you should have a picture of Blackrock Mountain. Or, I mean, what is supposed to be Blackrock Mountain. So I'm just going to open this by itself so I can look with you and then comment. Because I'm going to have this open on another window. So this is the new instance zone for... Blackrock Mountain, and as you can see, you have the south, southern and northern entrance of Blackrock Mountain, and then you have the two sideways. You also have the volcano in the middle, which, I mean, looks goddamn good. Oh, it looks so good. You can already guess what's on the each side, but I'm going to spoil it for you anyway. There's new two zones, which is Shadow Forge City and Blackrock Spire, and there's probably going to be... We can, which one should we take a look at first? I think I'm going to try... I need to try and scroll to them. So, the first one we're going to take a look at, I look at is Shadow Forge City. So, you have the two entrances in there, I mean, I don't know, is, is it more of a pain to take now? Since you only had one entrance before, but hey, you still have the cannon tower there, and cannon towers there. And from what I have heard drop the tell us, it is that you can see the two runestone-ish looking buildings uh, nearby the anvil, which you will need to destroy before uh, destroying the altar, which is presumably Shadow Forge City. Um, and the annual itself gives a defense aura, if I've heard right, or if I remember right. Um, and Shadow Forge City looks excellent, looks just really, really good. So, we look forward to that. Maybe we'll see dar more Dark Iron try this because of the mo more defensible base, I don't know. Could be. Uh, the next one, if I can find it myself, is Blackrock Spire itself. Oh, uh, Bla yeah, Bra yeah, Blackrock Spire. Which is going to be the Dark Horde base at the beginning of the game. And already you can see that there's a new model for Ren Blackhand, which is changed to normal Fell Orc Blademaster. So, new model for Ren Blackhand, guys. I mean, I guess it kind of fits him more. And the base itself looks cool. There seems to be an upper area in Blackrock Spire. You see the northern passage there. And then you have the two passageway into Blackrock uh, Spire. So, yeah, looks really, really, really good. Now, we're going to also take a look at Northrend, which has been vastly reterrained as well. And the first picture we're going to take a look at is Dragonblight. So, on the picture you have right now, you should be able to see uh, the... I think it's Eastern, I'm so bad with that. Eastern and West. Um, Eastern... Uh, uh, Eastern section of Dragonblight. Uh, where you can see an uber rack with a new entrance to a shoulder room, more trees in this area. You even see a small Tuscar village there with a shipyard, not sure if you can buy ships. Uh, you have the new location of Naxramas, as you can see up there, that's where you need to go. You also have Wintergrasp, if I remember it right, if that's what it's called. Lake Wintergrasp has been added as a small subzone to Dragonblight. And it even involves, uh, it has the Vault of Ar Archimon, which is a capsule base. What it does, not quite sure, you might find out in the notes somewhere. But as you also can see, uh, you can see more of a open and full of ice spikes everywhere area. That that's probably describes it really, really well. Um, there is another picture as well of the eastern part of it. There we go. So there you see the rest of it. You can also see a new human village, which is an event for Gil... No, Gil is what I'm saying. For Light Blue. I think he gains this by going Arching Crusade or going to Northrun at any time as human. I'm not sure we might see this longer down. But yeah, few threes in this area. You have the normal cult base, you have the <laughs> very sp ice spiked an area. But you also have the new entrance 
to Draxron Keep or how Draxron Keep will be, which is we can al already see that there's an opening which leads into Soldrak, which means there's a third way to get in. And looking at Soldrak as it is right now, it looks very, very good. So I like that a lot. Uh, we're going to move on to Grizzly Hills, which, man, that looks a uh, lot better. This is more, this is a way uh, bigger area with way more trees now to chop down for any players. Uh, two entrances into Howling Fjord. Uh, so I really, really like the look of this. Uh, we're going to move on to the last one of Northrend, which is, yeah, Howling Fjord. I just didn't find it. There we go. So there's only one entrance, or sorry, two entrances if you want to land with ships and start uh, invading. You can see what is supposed to be the Rickle base. Uh, Oathguard Keep, I think it is. And then there's two major areas to walk in. To, uh, to Northrend. So yeah, it looks very, very good. But hey, we are not done yet. I just need to lo <laughs> look down the list and see how much uh, we have arrived at. So the next one we are going to take a look at is Searing Gorge. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, I just need to find it up. There we go. You should already see it by the time I'm just rambling. So this is the new Searing Gorge. And I think if Droplet told me right, it's not quite finished yet, but this is what it's supposed to be, and I mean, holy shit, that looks so much more better. You can't see the proper entrance to Blackrock Mountain, but you can see kind of where it's supposed to be. There's even a dark iron base, which, I mean, might be capturable in the future, or it's just going to be a difficult creep camp in the beginning of the game. Who knows, and from Searing Gorge, we are going to move down into, what's the song called? Burning Steps? Uh, yeah, you should have it right there. And there you have the other entrance to Blackrock Mountain, which is yeah, one of the two ways. And yeah, this is the big this is the big change. Basically, you have just one island there. And that's probably gonna be going to be where the portal is to Outland, or if that's changed, I don't know. And you see, you, have, you see, you have the trees down there now instead of that island being one big area. So looking really, really good. But we're not done with terrain just yet. Oh, no, 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 no. We have even more to show. There's also one other area in Northern I forgot, which is the Scourge base in Dragonbite has been removed. And they, it has been moved to Boron Tundra, uh, where the Temple City of Ankila is a new base for Blue in the beginning of the game. So just so you're aware, if you were missing that base, Scourge players, then you know you have got gained a new one, which looks a bit better and a bit more defendable, I would say. Um, from there, we are going to take a move on to Hillsbird Foothills with the new Alterac Mountains. Now, from a previous patch, I think, it will change look, sorry. It was mentioned that Frostwolf Keep is going to be in this new valley uh, down nearby Taran Mill. You even have this new entrance, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, then you have Altrak Castle there and Strumbrad. Uh, you can see the fountain has been moved a little bit and the creeps as well up to where Strumbrad is. Uh, so yeah, this looks very, very good. Uh, we're missing... What are we missing? Oh uh, yeah! So this is the new camp for Dragon Maw with the new model for Necrosh, which is the Blade Master, the previous uh, Black Hand model, which is called Angerfang Encampment in... Um, <laughs> oh my god! Wetlands, there we go. So it's going to be a small base there for you to start out with and probably can go and creep these creeps a bit faster and maybe even attack... Oh god, sorry. And attack that uh, yellow base quicker. So you won't be stalled by that. And by that, I think we've gone through every single... No, we have not. Stromgard has received a small but... Wow, pretty cool change as well. So you can already see that the main building has been moved uh, to the back there. Uh, there's been some fountains added, uh, a tower, and water around the area. So there's only one way in. Or, of course, the sea path as well works. But still, this looks pretty good. There's some buildings, ruined buildings around. So, yeah, looking forward to see this happening in game. Maybe it's going to be a new potential main base for Blackfoot to focus more on. Who knows? Now, these are all the terrain changes. Uh, we're not going to go through control point changes. You can look at that yourself. And also creep camp changes. We're going to move straight on to the 
races itself. So this is apparently a work in progress. Fell Pact now requires that Illidan's mission to destroy the Frozen Throne has been resolved. So, meaning, if you want to go Fell Elves, you'll need to destroy the Frozen Throne first with Illidan. So, yeah. If Illidan failed the mission, you will lose L Illidan and Lady Vash plus Naga units as Fell Elves. Okay. Blood Elves, while in the Alliance, has received an army penalty in order to give further initiative to leave. Your food cap is limited to 120 while in the Alliance. You can only train 5 Ballistas while in the Alliance, as a 8 as usual if you go a new path. So, this means that Blood Elves' army is going to be, well, a lot less. 120 instead of 300? 200? I don't remember the limit anymore. So... That's some initiative to to leave, I guess. But hey, uh, you could focus more on Hero Squad too. But then again, you would need all the others. So I mean, we'll see. Increase the radius of anti wretched aura uh, of power generators to 600 from 400. Restoring Silverman gives less golden number. Lieutenant Dawnrunner, the first ready demo, is massively buffed in damage, hit points, and armor, and she also has a leadership aura like Thagras and Vilmar. And Holdren's Bright Wings base in Eversong starts with more soldiers, two spellbreakers, mana worms, one priest, and one ballista. Ah, that's pretty cool. Ah, then we move on to the Scourge. So Necromancer's Neutralization Wave, change the spell, is a spell instead of Cripple as Master Spell, so Scourge has to spell from the beginning of the game instead of being forced to go into Rubians. I'm just gonna tell I I don't go in the Rubians that often. I don't know why. I just like the standard Scourge better, I guess. Um, but new Rubians is better. But it's good that you can have Neutralization Wave from the beginning of the game instead of that you have to go to, uh, that to get a spell. Uh, the Seer has been changed with getting Mind Wave, which is very fire, basically. And they have Cripple instead of Neutralizing Wave. They have plus 100 uh, health to armor and better attack speed. And of course, as we saw in the pictures, Temple City of Enkelar has been added as a new base in Northrend, and removed the uh, the <laughs> Western uh, Dragon by one. And Falrek has gained a buff with 800 health uh, and removed the nerf to Cinderghost's Frostworm Summon. Cinderghost no longer has an inventory, and a Shulner Rupe has 1,500 health. Huh. Pretty neat scourge. That looks pretty pretty good. Okay, I know this already. I've seen this, and I I saw this before this has been posted, and I know there's already a few, few changes to this, but this is goddamn good. Whew, here we go. Hashtag poor legion. Return to your master is now a one-time use ability, and its radius is increased by 100, and it now recalls 24 units instead of 12. One-time use. Let that sink in for you guys, just so you are aware. It's one-time use. Now this is going to change the outland fight quite heavily, in fact, because are you going to want to waste your, your return to mass, your your once time save ability on getting your dreadlords back to outland to help fight the the dark horde? So I'm wondering what we're going to see. I mean, I've heard some talks about beginning to sell the orbs, or some people already do this all the time, sell the orbs to get demon supremacy and. Uh, Astral Walk. I mean, you're going to need Astral Walk to get to Outland now if you don't want to waste Return to your Master. Which can be quite risky, to be honest, because it's a wonderful thing to have this ability uh, just to be able to get away. So, I mean, and Demon Supremacy is quite important if you want to fight Dark Horde, because you're going to need the Infernals to stand up against Pit Lords and etc. So, I'm really looking forward to see how Legion is going to change during this patch, what they're going to be forced to do if they want to win. Uh, so yeah, Kill Jaden no longer can walk on water, thank goodness for that. Very Mouth Frost and Deathrock has new abilities, check in game when released. Cool, cool. Uh, Deathrock is now level 3 at the start, and Very Mouth Frost is 2. Kazak has gained a nerf, which involves his strength and intelligence at the start, and his bleed ability, which requires much more mana. Nathra Sims Elite's natural mana regeneration is reduced from 2 to 0 0.50, which means they <laughs> they don't get ma that much mana anymore, unless they get help from Wise Council and such, but their regeneration is quite, quite bad. Uh, transfer mana from Nathra Sims Elite uh, has a 600 cast range instead of 800, and trans transfers 
20 mana instead of 30. Uh, last 8 seconds instead of 15. Okay. Train uh, limit of meat wagons has been set to 4 for Legion. Oh my god. Thank goodness, finally. The double siege can be really annoying. Uh, Legion is unable to train undead units if we lose very much for us. Uh, excluding acolytes for lumber. So, that is pretty good because, I mean, having the double things can be quite strong actually. Fell beasts have a slower movement speed and, f and their feedback deals 50% less feedback damage to regular units. Same applies for void walkers except 40%, and they have 50 less hit points. And they train them for pit lords if Legion has taken. Black Temple is reduced to 2, while Dark Wards can still train 4 of them as usual. So, Legion, you are going to be in a tough spot this patch. A lot of nerfs has uh, been given to you. Return to Master was probably the biggest one, honestly. Uh, and, the, yeah, it was actually that, I think. Uh, you need that. It's important. It's been around the game since almost the beginning. So, yeah. Now moving on to Dalaran slash Gilneas. <coughs> There's a couple of things here. You will now receive a reasonable injury if Silver Hand becomes Scarlet and research High Elves prior to doing so. And it will not happen if you go Wolken, she will despawn instead. Okay. She will remain uh, with you permanently or uni until killed. Okay. You will lose her if you go Aegwen along with Ronin and Anstrim. Guess that's fine. Galen Trollbane and Stromgod is now only hand it over to purple if they went Gilneas or the Wurgen path. Ah, oh, and if purple chooses the Dalaran path, Galen will despawn instead. Okay, so that means if Light Blue has gained uh, Galen and Stromgod, he will only get it, or Dalaran will only get it, or purple, if he's gone the Wurgen path. That's kind of cool, actually, that you won't get it as new Dalaran. So, yeah. Ronin must now raise new Dalaran in the Dalaran Dungeons instead of Storm Peaks. Okay, so you can only do it there now. No, no longer in Storm Peaks, I guess. And the Tillsful Agents removed, has been removed from Storm Peaks. Tandra Proudmoor has plus 500 health. Great, co great Hawks. <laughs> I almost said what you think I was going to say, I think. Cost 35 gold instead of 43. Kulturas has plus 1000 hit points and a very long anti-ship attack range. Cool. Ronin's Arcane Wrath uh, spell deals 15 less damage each take. Cool. Fairy, drag Fairy Dragons from Taldruin has a powerful, it has a less powerful sleep ability. It doesn't last as long. Cool. Arrow Girl's Mass teleports teleports 12 units instead of 80. Was it 80? Oh wow, that is a big thing. Sorceress Polymorph has a much shorter rotation. Yes. Oh, finally. You'll start out with few ships at the coast of Silver Pines. Some are removed, some are moved to Cold Taras. Okay. Uh, dwarves is going to be our next one. So, Falstead's main attribute has been changed from strength to agility. Ah, oh, wonderful. Uh, Griffin Riders has slower movement speed and costs 3 more gold. Seed Engines has minus 150 hit points and reduced blast damage. Their attack uh, range is set to 375. And their train limit is reduced to two. Oh my god. Yeah, of course, Dark Iron Space has been. Uh, Shadow for Shit has been now located in the sub zone. Area Peak has plus 1000 health. Mental Harbor Tower defenses are strengthened. And the town starts with one additional shipyard. Dwarven Keep Towers has minus two armor. And their cluster rockets has 300 less range. Dwarven Warriors has 30 less health. But, but costs two less gold. Bear Warriors has one less armor and costs two gold. Dark Iron Dwarfs can now train Shadowforge elites from ordinary town halls. They could never do this? Huh. I thought they could. Uh, your main base on Asperth is now located on Blackrock Mountain uh, in the subzone for Dark Horde. Uh, added a new extra main building in uh, in Blackrock Mountain. You, you now have Blackrock Spire and Blackwing Lair. These perform different roles. Okay. So that's maybe what the northern part was, or the southern part for that matter. Uh, Doom Cannons uh, has a heavy armor instead of fortified and no longer benefits from the Death Infusion upgrade. Ren Blacken has the new model and they're no longer, they no long, 
Wait, there are no longer possible interactions between chromatic drakes and fell cores. Ah, so you can no longer pick up the cores. Oh, the dragons! Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Uh. Oh! Okay, for Horde, Captain Crass is back. If you don't remember who this was, this was a demi elite on the Crassworks, which was a goblin uh, tinker, basically. He was like that. He's removed if you go Magar. Ah, okay, cool. Gorn has Blade Arts, Drunken Brawler instead of Flaming Axe. Oh my god, they're making Gorn useful, guys. How is people gonna survive? They wanna kill him off and focus on Drakthar. Nah, the people are still gonna do that. They want levels, e extreme high levels in Drakthar. Um, even though I like him. Clan Brutes and Corcoran uh, Guards no longer have Roar, they have Battle Terror. Okay, so... Uh, Howl of Terror, that's what I have now. Direwolves have been changed. Their hit points are now at 1050. Has Critical Strike, Unarmored Type, plus 3 armor. Higher Collision, better attack, and there's a maximum of 10 of them. Cool. Very cool, actually. Because they've never... Because they've been just useless, I think. Uh, the extra Kargat soldiers weren't at the last version. Kargat is now plus 2 grunts, 2 warlocks, and 1 demolisher. Goblin technology costs 180 gold instead of 300. True Horde Loyalist has medium armor instead of heavy. Raven Tusk Spear Throw has even better attack speed and damage as well as plus 15 health. You can no longer dispel Drakthar's ultimate. Oh my god! Horde is getting up there. Clan Brutes and Corcoran Guards now share the exact, exact same skill tree. Okay. Cool. Has Forsaken gotten anything? Oh, I see something there already. If Mugthor is still alive and owned by Forsaken, you may create five Cross Ridge, Cross Ridge Ogres from the Runes of Altrak. These Ogres are powerful frontline units with full rise. Cl Crush, Crush Ridge Ogres are unique to Forsaken. And Mugthor has also been buffed with 2300 health, or he has that much now. Um, his armor is increased by one, armor type change to hero and attack to siege. And the Black Spiders has 570 sev 575 health instead of 360, plus one armor and better attack speed. Or no, sorry, better attack. And Grand, Ap Grand Apothecary Putris now has a new model. Cool, I think I might actually know what it is, or I don't know. It's probably going to be a surprise then. Okay, so Cult of the Damned. Ooh. Baron Rivendell will replace Rammstein the Gorgor as a cult's frontline demi hero. He is available at the start and can be revived at Nax Ramas. Ah, cool. Dragthrone Keep is now Capturable Base. Capturable Base, sorry. Twisted Whites has minus 125 health and slightly worse attack and attack speed. Uh, Ebon Blade Knights has minus 2 armor stud. Beltrus costs 33 gold instead of 29. Destroyers now has 700 hit points instead of 1000, minus 1 armor, costs 42 gold, and they take 12 seconds to train instead of 8. Necromancers has also to change the spell instead of cripple as their master spell, Heart of Naxxramas plus 1000 health. You start with 2 less meat wagons, remove 1 from Coin's Crossing and 1 Silver Moon, and a Cursed Blades Airborne Blades uh, passive is less effective. And Dark Hunter of Thea has a new model. A lot of guys is getting a new model. I'm looking so forward to CDs that I have not seen yet. So that's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Um, oh my god, we've been going for 33 minutes. That's a lot, actually, for this patch. This is one of the biggest patches we've had in a while, guys. Just let that sink in as too. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. So, in honor of Marshmallow's very early game gameplay drafts for the map, the pack course in Tears for it tears full, no rewards, plus 100 gold lumber uh, and lumber to silver hand if it reaches Hearthblend. But Modern Hold Keep must be alive. Oh, that's pretty cool. Modern Hold Keep has plus 1000 health. Tyrion Fordring is now a fully revivable hero. Oh my god, yes! Um, Scarlet Onslaught gets to keep Isillian. Brigitte Bendis has less hit points. If the silver hand researched high elves before. Yeah, okay, so the Varisa guy. The Varisa guy. Uh, of uh, event. Oh, I'm starting to lose my voice if you didn't notice. Uh, Veresa will not return to Light Blue if Archer Crusade is triggered. Oh, okay. Alexandra's Morgrain's new Righteous Combat ba passive deals 4 times crit damage instead of 5 at max level. 
South Shore starts with a shipyard. Great Hawks cost 35 gold instead of 43. High Elven Ballistas trade, lim trade limit reduced to 4. Nice. Aha, here we go. Winter Guard has been added as a small base in Dragonbite that you may uh, claim to gain a quick foothold in the central northern. Dragon Maw's event to create a base in Highback has been given to Silverhand instead. This event is only able uh, is only able to be triggered by Archer Crusade. So Dragon Maw can no longer get that event. Okay. Cool. Trolls uh Jinthalo is no longer no longer has a Temple of Blood as an instant uh, base. The exterior base is fortified with more soldiers and towers. So that's where Black Rock Mountain is now. The, the instance is now gone. And now the Drakthong is a capital base by other players. The base will provide more utility for trolls than other factions controlling it. Okay. Is This is the last one. Uh, added the new base in the wetlands called Angerfang Encampment. Necro starts there with some of his forces. The Ruins of Altrak allows you to uh, create Clan Ogres, remove the event that allows you to capture High Bank. Necros has a new model and he has Flaming Axe instead of Fellblade. Removed some of the, e some of the extra soldiers, soldiers from 1.44. Dragon Scale Armor of Dragon Spawns is nerfed by 25% and Dragon Spawn Soldiers has minus one armor. Okay. Uh, there's some bugs here as well, uh, you c which you can take a look at. So this is... 1.45, no set date yet, but this is indeed one of the biggest patches we've had in ages. My voice is just destroyed right now. Ooh. Blah, blah. So I'm going to link the post for you in the description so you can take a look yourself. And leave a comment. What do you think, guys? What do you think about the patch so far? So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, guys, bye-bye.